Hello everyone. In this presentation, let us discuss about the application of PCR in COVID-19. I am Bharat Balaji. Along with my dearest friends Deepika Teridoman and Aditya Shankar, let us discuss about this presentation. We have first of all the introduction to PCR and then the applications of PCR in COVID-19, the sample collection and preparation, and two types of PCRs involved, the digital PCR and the RT-PCR, and then the conclusion. PCR technique is based on the enzymatic replication of DNA. In PCR, a short segment of DNA is amplified using primer-mediated enzymes, the DNA polymerase synthesizes new strands of DNA complementary to the template DNA. The DNA polymerase can add a nucleotide to the pre existing 3 OH group only. Therefore, a primer is required. Thus, more nucleotides are added to the 3 prime end of the DNA polymerase. It is a common laboratory technique used to make many copies of a particular region of DNA. Typically, the goal of PCR is to make enough of the target DNA region so that it can be analyzed or used in some other ways. The coronavirus is a RNA virus. When it infects an individual, more copies of the viral genome will be produced. PCR is a sensitive technique to amplify nucleus acids like DNA or RNA. In this technique, First, we have to obtain the sample and purify for nucleic acid, then convert RNA to complementary DNA. This is done because RNA is fragile while DNA is more stable. Then we design primers for the target of interest. The primers are like bookends to a specific region of the viral genome. A primer pair will allow the amplification as little as one RNA viral genome. It can convert into billions of copies that can be detected. Each round of amplification uses a DNA replication enzyme to copy whatever DNA has a primer pair. We typically do 30 to 40 rounds of PCR amplification. The actual test being run for diagnostics is a quantitative PCR. Here, the primers are paired with a probe that gives off light during every round of PCR ampli amplification. This is called fluorescence. As exponentially, more copies are made every round more light is generated. We plot this light intensity per round of application on a graph to determine the initial viral load. An infected person will have a very large titer and easily detectable. A protein antibody test is only useful after someone has been infected and mounted an immune response. This means much later than infection and so it's not useful to see if you are currently infected, right? Then, let us review the two important components of PCR. TAC polymerase, the DNA polymerase typically used in PCR is called TAC polymerase after the heat tolerant bacterium from which it was isolated, the Thermus aquaticus bacterium, a temperature at which a human or E. coli DNA polymerase will not be functional, non-functional will be taking part in this technique so that we are using the TAC polymerase enzyme and then PCR primers are used. TAC polymerase can only make a DNA if it has a primer, right, which is a short sequence of nucleotides that provides a starting point for DNA synthesis. Two primers are used in each PCR reaction and they are designed so that they flank the target region that should be copied. The primers bind to the template by complementary base pairing. Now, the basic steps of PCR are denaturation, which happens at 96 degrees Celsius. Here, we heat the reaction strongly to separate or denature the DNA strands. This provides single stranded template for the next step, which is annealing, which is done at 55 to 65 degrees Celsius. Here, we cool the reaction so that the primers can bind to their complementary sequences on the single-stranded template DNA. 
and then the third step extension which is done at 72 degrees celsius here we raise the reaction temperature so that the tac polymerase extends the primers synthesizing new strands of dna we repeat this cycle and 20 to 30 times in a typical pcr reaction which generally takes hours depending on the length of the dna region being copied if the reaction is efficient which is works well the target region can go from just one or a few copies to billions in hours now let us see a video related to the pcr and its usage in covid-19 diagnosis A molecular or PCR test is the most commonly used way to confirm if a patient is currently infected. It shows if virus particles are present in a sample taken from the patient. Technicians use special lab equipment to amplify genetic material from any virus particles in the sample, boosting it to detectable levels so that an infection can be confirmed. To take the swab, a healthcare worker uses a cotton tip with a long shaft to gently scrap the back of the nasopharynx. The end of the swab will have some of the person's cells and mucus on it. As well as any bacteria or viruses, the swab is quickly put into a tube containing a mix of protein and antibiotics that keeps any collected virus safe Then the tube is sealed and sent to a testing laboratory. However, sometimes the virus might be multiplying in places away from where the swab is or there is not yet enough virus around for the swab to pick up. So a negative test might mean that you don't have coronavirus or that you have coronavirus and it just isn't detectable yet or the wrong part was swept. The coronavirus is made up of the two main parts, an oily membrane around the outside studded and with the proteins that stick out of the surface and genetic materials called RNA on the inside with more proteins tightly wrapped around it. The human cells are also made up of proteins, membrane, DNA and RNA. This sample will have lots of things including mucus and human cells and as well as viruses. That means we need to get rid of the parts of the virus that we do not need the proteins, oily membranes and DNA from the mucus and human cells. For this, we break open the virus particles using some chemicals, a detergent called a cryotropic salt. The cryotropic salt has several roles. It denaturates or unravels the many different proteins in the sample, stopping them from working and help separate the RNA from any proteins wrapped around it. We chop up the proteins in the sample into bits using an enzyme called the proteins. And we chop up the DNA in the sample into bits using an enzyme called the DNAs. Then we have to get rid of everything except the RNA. The original PCR estimates the amount of amplified PCR product at the end of the several PCR cycles. But digital PCR measures the number of target molecules directly by counting positive fluorescence in compartments. Digital PCR is the third generation of PCR after endpoint PCR and real time quantitative PCR. It has high sensitivity, accuracy, and the ability to absolutely quantify the amount of target DNA. Fundamental Principles DPCR differs from standard endpoint PCR where the sample is partitioned randomly into 200,000 sub-reactions, but standard PCR is run as a single reaction on a bulk sample. The digital PCR is performed on each partition which contains either one or zero target sequence. In order to compensate for the few partitions that will contain more than one target sequence, the data is treated by means of poison statics. The important thing is, if the partition contains an amplifiable sequence, it is counted as positive, otherwise it is counted as, counted as negative. Now let's see about the steps in digital PCR. 
sample preparation. The PCR can be used to amplify any purified DNA sample, gDNA or cDNA. Any M mRNA targets of interest must be isolated and converted to cDNA. Purified gDNA or cDNA is then mixed with the forward and reverse primers. Then, same like classic PCR, first primer anneal to the 3 days and 5 days ends of the target sequence, typically 60 to 50 bps in length. But different to classical PCR, the 5 days nucleus hydrolysis probe then annuals between the forward and reverse primers and includes a 5 days fluorophore and 3 days quencher. The hydrolysis probes increase sensitivity of the reaction. Second step is the PCR assays partitions the sample mix into individual nanoliter reactions so that there is either one or zero target DNA molecules in each partition. Third step is following partitioning reactions are amplified using regular PCR cycle parameters. As DNA polymerase extends from the forward primer, the exon nucleus activity degrades the probe, releasing the 5 days probe from the 3 days, which in turn emits detectable fluorescence. After so the PCR cycle is complete, any partition that included one template or target DNA sequence will show fluorescence. The total number of droplets or wells with fluorescence represent the total number of target molecules. To inhibitor than traditional PCR technique. In this picture, we can see the working of a nanoplate based digital PCR. Firstly, we have to prepare and load our digital PCR instrument, measure DNA amount and purity, set up our digital PCR system, prepare our reaction mix in a pre plate, load plate, and start our digital PCR machine. Second step is to run and amplify. The plate is processed in the priming slash rolling module where the reaction mix of each well is partitioned into a thousand little individual reactions. PCR is performed on thermocycler. Thirdly, we have to analyze DPCR result. Depending on our DPCR system, select the application to view a heat map, histogram, etc. What makes RTQ PCR different is that the nucleotides are labeled with a small fluorescent molecule that gets released during the elongation step. When it is released, the light is emitted, allowing a detector to read the intensity of the light. The more light, the more DNA is being synthesized. Difference between the running PCR reaction on a gel and performing a real-time quantitative PCR is that the gel will give you only yes or no answer. Traditional PCR won't be able to say how much we have it, but an RTQ PCR can tell us. A collection of patient material, uh, inactivation of virus by detergent, a chaotrophic rea uh, reagent or by heating, RNA extraction, transfer to PCR plate, format in which C DNA synthesis by RT and detection by qPCR may take place. Alternatively, detection can be made by sample barcoding and high uh, throughput DNA sequencing. Unlike the widely used approach, which includes an RNA extraction step, using industrial RNA extraction kits, detection sample testing, circumvents this process by omitting extraction instead after clinical samples are deposited in transport medium viral particles are inactivated either through heating or by direct lysis in detergent containing buffer the inactivated sample are then used for downstream rt pcr diagnostic reaction rt pcr is a highly sensitive technique for the detection and quantitation of mRNA. It is a type of molecular diagnostic test. The technique comprises two parts. The synthesis of C DNA or complementary DNA from RNA by reverse transcription and the amplification of specific C DNA by polymerized chain reaction. RT-PCR has been used to measure the viral load with HIV and may also be used with other RNA virus such as measles and mumps. 
In this test, samples are collected from the nose or throat with a swab. Molecule tests detect virus in the sample by amplifying viral genetic material to detectable level. For this reason, a molecular test is used to confirm an active infection, usually with a few days of exposure and around the time that symptoms may begin. Here, the CT stands for cycle threshold and indicates how many times the machine needed to try to copy a particular virus's genetic material before being able to detect that material on a particular test called PCR test. While a CT value may reflect the amount of viral genetic material in a particular specimen at the time a test is run, CT values indicate the number of amplification cycles needed to reach the threshold at which the PCR test can detect a positive signal which means a low CT value is generally considered to indicate a higher viral load in a patient specimen, which means less amplification is needed to detect a positive, and a high CT value is generally considered to indicate a lower viral load in a patient specimen, that is, more amplification is needed to detect a positive. Currently, there is no consensus as to whether or not particular CT values correlate with a person being or not infectious or risk level for disease severity. So, appropriate care should be taken with interpretation of CT values. Highly sensitive and specific, which sends the result within few hours, faster than other methods, with lower contamination and errors, can be used to do both quantitative and qualitative analysis. Thank you, friends.